Hello, hello. How is everybody out there in on the internet? How are all of you? We'll be starting this English lesson in about 38 seconds. English lesson uh an English lesson about exercise. Let me just double check to make sure everything is working properly. Hopefully, it is. I see some familiar faces oh, over there in the chat. <laughs> Hopefully, this morning, the lesson actually makes some sense. I uh had a busy week and uh kind of losing my train of thought already. So, bear with me. I'm sure I will do a pretty good job but we'll start in about three, two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about exercise. I haven't exercised yet today but perhaps I should have. I got up early to get all of this together so that we could have an English lesson and I'm already losing my train of thought which isn't good. Should I start again? Let me start again. Sometimes I have to do that when I start these lessons. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about exercise. Exercise is something you do so that you stay healthy. Exercise is physical activity that you do every day or every other day so that your muscles are in good shape so that your heart is healthy. Um exercise is something I sometimes forget to do but I do try to do it as regularly as possible. There are a number of things you can do to stay healthy. You can eat healthy food. You can exercise. You can make sure you relax. It's good to take a break sometimes as well. Um but this English lesson this morning will focus on exercise as one of the main things that people do in order to stay healthy and stay in shape. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about exercise. <laughs> Sorry for the double start there. I wanna say hi to Lolly 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 Yaroslav, Vitor, Mustafa, Dave the Canadian here to moderate the chat, Freddie Wolf, um Key Park is here, uh Asel, Dimitri, Irina, uh Gloria. Let me scroll back. Who did I see earlier? Sis is here. Uh Freddie Wolf says, hi, Bob. Good morning, Canada. I'm already warming up to avoid straining or injuring myself during the exercises to be done. Wanda Prado is here. I should start doing it. Maybe I should do an exercise video that's also an English lesson at some point. That would be fun. Uh run with me or something. Hi to Cecilia, uh Ricardo. A lot of members and a lot of regulars here. Good to see all of you. Um remember this English lesson will take about 45 minutes to an hour. I will pause as I go through the lesson to answer some questions. I usually just try to answer questions that are on topic. So, if you have a question about exercise during this English lesson, please ask it. Um and do have good English conversations in the chat. Do take the time to talk to each other and to enjoy each other's company. So, should we get started? I think we should. Let me do one more check of the audio to make sure everything is working properly. Looks like everything is working properly. Let's get started. This is a video lesson again. I did put together a video lesson for you. You'll see what I mean as soon as I start the lesson. Exercise. So, as I stated in the introduction, exercise is physical activity. It's something we do in order to make sure our bodies stay in shape. When you exercise, you go through a series of movements or you do an activity or you play a sport. Usually, you will sweat and you will start to breathe rapidly when you exercise. All of this is good for your bodies. It helps you to have more agility. That's the ability to move really quickly in different directions. It gives you more strength so that you can lift heavier things. Um it gives you better when you're older it helps with your balance as well. If you exercise as an older person, you're less likely to fall over if you trip. So, exercise has many many benefits. It makes your heart healthier if you can get your heart rate up when you exercise. So, something each and every one of us should be uh putting into our week. We should be planning each week to do some exercise. One thing that is very common is people will go for a run or they'll go for a jog. 
If I switch this to the ing form of the verb, I could say I like to go running or I like to go jogging. Sometimes in English, we'll say I like to run. I like to go for a run or I like running. I like to jog. I like to go for a jog or I like jogging. Sorry that there's so many different versions but certainly this is a form of exercise that will make your heart rate go up and I'm sure if you go for a run or go for a jog the next day, your legs will probably be a bit sore. So, excellent, excellent thing to do if you want some exercise. Go for a run or go for a jog. You can also go for a walk or you can go walking or you can walk. Another, <laughs> another very, another, another verb where there's some variations um and you can use it as a noun as well. These two people are going for a walk. They're actually kind of marching a little bit but it is technically a walk. If you're wondering what the difference is between a walk and a run, when you run, at times, both feet are off the ground. When you walk, um basically, uh these people are getting really close, aren't they? When you walk, both feet stay on the ground at all times. So, walking is kind of a slower version of motion. This is my preferred exercise. I like to go for a walk every day or every other day. It's just a great way to get your heart rate up and to uh exercise a little bit. So, you might cycle. So, in English, we use a lot of different ways to describe this. You might go for a bike ride. You might go cycling. Uh you might decide, let me see if there's another way to say it. I think those would be the two most common. What do you do for exercise? I like to ride my bike. What did you do yesterday? I went for a bike ride. So, um we do use cycling. You could say, oh, I go cycling. Um I'm a I'm a cyclist. That's what I do for exercise. This is not what I do for exercise. I find cycling to be a little bit, I don't know. It's cool because you can go really far in the same amount of time as opposed to walking or running but I haven't really done much of it. Maybe I should do a bit more cycling. Swim. I do not swim like this guy. Um when I go swimming, there's a lot more splashing because I'm not very good at swimming. But swimming is a cool form of exercise because it's a lot easier on your body. What I mean by that is when you go running, uh you're it's very jarring. Like you you land really hard when you go running. Uh when you go cycling, it's a little easier as well. But certainly when you swim, it's very smooth. You're in the water. That's what I like about swimming. I don't swim for exercise very often. But uh certainly, um I do enjoy going swimming in the summer to cool off. To lift weights. When you lift weights, you get what are called barbells or dumbbells. You get weights and they'll be uh, measured in kilograms or pounds. So, you might get a couple of two pound weights and lift them above your head like this person. Uh you might get some ten pound weights and you might use them to try and increase the amount of strength in your biceps or your triceps. This is your bicep and tricep. It's hard to see on the screen, isn't it? Um I'm not going to name all the muscles in this activity but when you train with weights, when you use weights, when you lift weights, when you do weights, there's a couple different ways to say it. Um it helps you get stronger. Um I like to do weights a couple times a week. I like to lift weights a couple times a week in order to just have some strength. It's nice to have strength and to do some strength training. I used a bunch of different words and phrases in that last section about lifting weights. You might wanna review that one after the lesson. When you exercise regularly, when you take care of yourself physically, we would say that you are fit. The people in this video are fit. They are not overweight. They are uh able to do something that I probably wouldn't be able to do. They can lift move a weight from one side to the other and keep their balance. If you know someone who eg- exercises regularly, you would probably say that they are fit. They are probably f- really lean. 
That means you're not overweight when you're really lean. At the end of last summer and early fall, I was quite lean. I had walked quite a bit and I had lost some weight. I was very lean. I'm doing okay now but I do need to start watching things again. But a fit person uh, would be slim. They would be uh, very lean. They would be in shape is what we would say which is the next word or phrase. So, when you are in shape, it means that you exercise regularly. In fact, when you're fit or when you're in shape, they have the same meaning. You would say, oh, my sister's in great shape. She exercises every day or my brother has to stay in shape because he trains other people at the gym. So, when you are in shape, once again, uh, you are not overweight. You are very slim and trim and you could probably see uh, some of your muscles if you wear a shirt like this. You are in shape. And then toned. When we describe someone as being toned, we're saying that we can see their muscles when they wear a shirt like this. So, this person, in fact, if I go to the picture instead of the video, you can see his muscles. You can see his shoulder muscles. You can see his bicep and tricep and you can see the muscles in his forearm because he's very, very toned. Um, this is something that I'm not very toned. I'm not, I think uh, someone in the, oh, mode said show us your guns. Yeah. Um, when you're toned, it just means that even when you're relaxing, it's easy to see muscle definition is how we would say it. So, this person is definitely very, very toned. And then, I'm going to talk about the verb work out. So, this person has decided to work out. They have decided to do some push-ups. So, any kind of physical activity can also be called a workout. We generally don't talk about running or walking or cycling as a workout. When you talk about someone working out, they're usually doing some push-ups, some chin-ups. They're lifting some weights. They're doing all different activities or exercises. Notice though, I've used workout in two ways. I can say I'm going to work out today and that's spelled this way. I can also switch it to a noun and say I'm going to do a workout. In that case, it becomes one word. So, um, if you're going to work out today, you will probably put on a short sleeve shirt and some shorts and you'll find a place in your house to work out or you might even go to the gym. Hey, let's look at some questions from this lesson. Let me see if we have any questions ready to go. It looks like we do. Um, I see, yeah, Mode says flex those muscles. Uh, Hafia says hi to everybody. Dimitri says, actually, you train almost all muscles when you swim. Yeah, I think swimming is a good total body exercise. Dimitri, good point. Uh, Pakistan saying hi to everyone. Uh, let's see here. Mode says they're doing Russian twists, if anyone was wondering. I've never tried those. I should. Harry 300 saying hi. Um, yeah, and let's see here. Hit in shape every day. Okay, let me not lose track. Let me get to the questions from Ruslan. Hello, dear teacher Bob. How are you today, sir? Good. What is more popular in Canada, cycling or jogging? Have a nice weekend. So, I don't know but what I can tell you is this. I live out in the country and cycling is a very popular thing on Saturday and Sundays. On Saturdays and Sundays. There are often people that go cycling on those days in large groups. Um, sometimes on a Sunday, we'll be out for a drive and we will see a lot of people riding their bikes. So, I don't know which is the most popular but in my area, I see a lot more cyclists for sure. Renata says, bonjour Bob, comment ça va? Ma question est, à quelle fréquence fais-tu du sport? Merci beaucoup pour la leçon, monsieur. Passez une bonne journée. Hello, Bob. How's it going? My question is, how frequently do you do sports or do you exercise? Uh, thank you for the lesson, sir, and have a good day. Um, lately, I, the last couple of weeks, I've been really bad but normally, I walk four to six times per week um, but I, I think I just got really, you know, when you get busy, it's hard 
The first thing you should do when you're busy is exercise but sometimes when you're busy, it's the last thing you do or you don't have time to do it. So, I need to get back at it, Renata. Uh let's see here. Yarrow is here. Morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. Happy Easter, everyone. What is your favorite exercise except walking? Have a nice weekend ahead. I do like to lift weights a little bit but I like to use weight machines or um uh yeah, I'll show you a slide later uh with that. There's different ways to lift weights. There's what's called free weights like barbells and dumbbells and then there's things called uh weight machines and I like those better because it, it's a little more controlled for me. So, I do like to go to the gym to do that. Hafia says, hey coach Bob, a good topic. I go running and go for hikes. Oh, I do like hiking as well. Sometimes I swim. Weird question. Why they call them dumbbells when it's rude to call people dumb? Ha ha. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know why they call them dumbbells. Barbell makes sense because there is a bar but I'm not sure why they are called dumbbells. Why are they called dumbbells? I'm just typing it in. Um Oh, I see. They were originally made from bells with no clappers in them. So, the bells were dumb as in they didn't make noise. Not sure if that's the truth but that's what it, the internet just told me. Uh let's see. Next question. Zangana. Hi, my teacher. Sorry if I said your name wrong. Hi, my English teacher. I have seen almost all of your videos. You are number one. How do you define jog? So, I would say a jog is a slow run, okay? When you run, you can sprint. That's when you run as fast as you possibly can Um, and sometimes when you run, you just run slowly. It's faster than walking but it's slower than sprinting. So, that's how I would describe it. I'm just checking where I am here on the list. Let's see. Anton. Glad to hear you, Bob. How many times usually do Canadians spend in the gym or in other sport places? Thank you. It depends on the person. Most people who have a gym membership will go two times a week, three times a week, maybe four or five times a week. In extreme cases, uh someone might go six or seven times a week but uh, you do need to rest sometimes. Um and some people do play sports for exercise. I'm not going to talk about sports in this lesson a lot but people who as adults play a sport might play once a week. They might play volleyball once a week. They might play hockey once a week. They might play basketball once a week. That's pretty common as well. Right now in Canada, people can sign up for beach volleyball in my area and that will be starting in about a month and it's usually one game a week. Okay, it says here we can get back to the lesson. Let's do that. Let me have a sip of water and we will keep on moving. (laughs) Excuse me. I should mute my mic when I do that. I think I say that every time. Uh where do I click? I click right here. Stretch. So, there's a couple things that well, there's different theories. One theory is that you should stretch before you exercise. Another theory is that you should stretch after you exercise. Some people think you should never stretch at all um but I do actually stretch a bit every morning. When you stretch, it means you you kind of do what this man is doing. You kind of lengthen your muscles, right? And you move and you bend over and you you lean from side to side. Now, stretching is something that helps your muscles to um loosen up a bit. It kind of removes a bit of pain if you have a little bit of pain. Um but I did mention another word and that's the word to warm up. When I go for a walk, I stretch a little bit and then I walk for about two or three minutes pretty slowly just so that my blood in my body can start flowing and my heart can get ready. Um I don't go the full normal walking speed. So, I normally walk about 3.8 miles per hour. I'm not sure what that is in kilometers per hour. But um doing a little bit of warm up exercise is always good before you go harder. So, a gym. It's interesting in English, a gym has a couple different meanings. At our school, we have a gym 
It's a large space where you can play basketball or volleyball or other sports. But this is also called a gym. I have a membership at a gym. That does not have a place to play sports. It has a number of different areas to work out. It has exercise bikes and weights and different things you can do in order to be uh, healthier. So, gym has a couple different meanings. The meaning I'm talking about today would be a place where you can go to work out like what these two guys are doing. And then, a weight room is generally any room that has lots of different weights in it, okay? So, um this is probably not the best example although you can see the weights on the far end. We would call those plates. Each one weighs a different amount but a weight room would be um when I was in university, we did there wasn't a gym on campus but in the dorm, there was a weight room. There was a place where you could go where they had weights where you could work out. So, not sure I'm explaining this totally correctly. At our school, we have a weight room as well. There's a place not the gym. I am probably confusing but there's a room where they have all the weights where you can go to work out. And for me, when I go to the gym, in order to get in, I need my membership card. In fact, it's a little different for me. It's just on my keychain here. Um in this little video, the person has an actual bigger card but you need a card in order to get in the gym. You do need to pay a membership. You do need to pay a certain amount of money per month. My gym is thirty dollars per month. It costs me thirty dollars per month. I have a membership card. When I go to the gym, I can show that card in order to get in. But lately, our gym, well, lately, it's been this way for a while. You don't, you can go any time of day and then you you just use your card at the front door and it goes beep and then the door opens. So, you can actually work out anytime you want. If I wanted to, I could go work out at three o'clock in the morning. I don't ever do that but I could if I wanted to. We have another phrase in English to hit the gym. This means simply to go to the gym. You could say, I'm gonna hit the gym later today. Are you gonna hit the gym tomorrow? Yeah, I'm gonna hit the gym later today. Why are you so sore? Oh, I hit the gym yesterday and it was a really hard workout. So, it's kind of a it's not really slang but it's kind of a slang way to say go to the gym. Um or you could say Bob needs to hit the gym a little bit more. I haven't been to the gym for a couple of weeks. I need to hit the gym uh soon so that I can be in better shape. So, there's a few different terms for people who go to the gym. Most people go just to be healthy, to work out, to lift some weights but some people go because they are actual bodybuilders. A bodybuilder would be someone who tries to get their body in really good shape, tries to have lots of really big muscles because they're going to go into a competition to show off their muscles. They'll pose and then they'll be judged and they'll try to win a bodybuilding competition. So, a bodybuilder is someone who wants everything to look perfect. They want all of their muscles, their leg muscles, their arm muscles, their chest muscles. They want it all to look perfect so that when they're in a pretty skimpy bathing suit at the competition, they can try and win that competition. Um this is different though than someone who is a weightlifter. A weightlifter is lifting weights in order to um kind of work their way up to lifting the most weight possible. A weightlifter would be someone who would love to go to the Olympics to be in the weightlifting division. So, a weightlifter is trying they will they will look good because weightlifting will build muscles but they're primarily concerned with how much they can lift not with how their body looks. So, generally, a bodybuilder is more concerned with how their body looks and a weightlifter is more concerned with learning to lift really, really heavy weights. I am neither. (laughs) I am neither. I am not a bodybuilder and I am not a weightlifter. Although, when I was in university, I I will admit, I did lift weights to try and look better. I wanted to look good. 
So, I've mentioned weights a number of times. These are called dumbbells. There's dumbbells and barbells. Weights are anything you lift in order to increase your muscle mass and your strength. These um weights are pretty common. Um this is what weights generally look like. There's a small bar and there are weights at each end. Um sometimes you can add and remove the weights from the end of the bar like with a barbell. So, you can put weights on the end um and then you can adjust how much you're going to lift. But I like to use a weight machine. So, a weight machine I find for me because the machine helps control your movement. So, there's machines. Ooh, it's like I'm it's like I'm lifting weights right now. There's machines where you push away. There's machines where you pull towards you. There's machines where you push up. There's machines where you pull down like this person is doing. Um I like those because I find when I do free weights. So, we would call these free weights. I find when I do those types of weights, sometimes it's hard to control what I'm doing. So, I think when I was younger, I was more likely to use free weights but now I like to use the weight machines because I have a little bit more control. Jen has suggested that I should be using both. That with free weights, it's actually good that they're hard to control because that helps you build other small muscles in your body to help control them. So, maybe I should do that. You might decide that you want to take a fitness class. Some people love to exercise on their own. I like to walk on my own. People who run sometimes like to just run by themselves but some people find it better to take a fitness class. They'll sign up for a class to um just to help them be motivated. It's similar to taking an English class. When you're learning English, you can learn on your own but sometimes it's more enjoyable to take a class with other people. So, these people are in a fitness class. They're outside. There's probably, I think the person in the middle at the front is probably the instructor and everyone else is probably following along. So, as the instructor shows them different exercises, they are following along. They are learning to do the exercises or doing the exercises with the instructor. One common type of class would be a yoga class. So, sometimes people think yoga is more about relaxing and less about exercise but if you've ever done a yoga class, you'll know that it's much more than sitting in this pose and uh, meditating a little bit. When you do yoga, you do a number of different poses and each pose forces you to use different muscles in your body and uh the last time I did some yoga, I was sore the next day because you put your body in different positions that you normally don't do and that causes your body to respond by building a bit of muscle. Um there's a type of exercise called cardio. So, cardio is any type of exercise that makes your heart rate go up. When I walk, I want it to be cardio. So, I walk at about 3.8 to 4 miles per hour. If I walk that fast, my heart rate goes above 130 beats per minute. We measure our heart rate in beats per minute. For me at the age of 51, if my heart rate goes over 125 or 130, we would consider that exercise cardio. Cardio is a short version of the word cardiovascular. <laughs> Anything that is cardiovascular refers to the heart. You might have to look that word up by the way. Cardiovascular. So, anyways, again, any exercise you do that raises your heart rate above a certain a number of beats per minute would be considered cardio. So, for me, they said I need to walk. They being after I had heart surgery, they said you need to walk for at least 20 minutes three or four days a week where your heart rate is over 125 beats per minute. So, I usually try to get a little bit over 130. So, cardio, any type of exercise where your heart rate goes up above a certain amount. If you're younger, 
it might be like 135 or 140 or 145. That might be where you need to get to. So, at least that's my non-professional definition of what cardio is. So, you would describe exercise as cardio. Oh, I need to do some cardio today. Um, I'm gonna go running. I haven't done very much cardio lately. An exercise bike. So, this is different than cycling. An exercise bike is a bike that doesn't move. It just sits in one spot but when you sit on it, you can uh pedal and you can exercise. Sometimes exercise bikes will have adjustable resistance. That means you can make it easier or harder to pedal. So, the harder it is to pedal, the higher your heart rate will go and the better it is as a workout. I do like using the exercise bike at the gym. Sometimes when the weather's bad, I will go to the gym and I will walk to the gym in the rain and then I will work out and use the exercise bike. I actually like walk walking in the rain by the way. I don't know why. There's something else called a treadmill. A treadmill is something that you can walk or run on when you're at the gym or you might even have one at home. A treadmill is a nice way to exercise when the weather is bad. Here when the weather is really bad, when it's snowing or when it's raining really hard, even though I like walking in the rain, I will go and use the treadmill at the gym. Sometimes I will use the treadmill and then I will use the exercise bike. That's sometimes nicer than you don't get soaking wet and cold from walking in the rain or in the snow. But yes, treadmills are very nice. In fact, a lot of people in North America actually own their own exercise bike and some people own their own treadmill. They're not cheap but they are nice pieces of exercise equipment to own. By the way, there's another term for you, exercise equipment. And this is how I would describe how I walk. I like to go for a brisk walk. You can go for a stroll. I think I've taught many of you that word before. A stroll is a slow walk. It's not really exercise. But when you go for a brisk walk, you move your arms a bit more. You walk really fast. In fact, the purpose of a brisk walk is to make sure that you um break a sweat. When you break a sweat, it means your body gets warm and you start start to perspire. You start to sweat. You can see this guy. He's definitely done something where it has caused him to break a sweat. He is sweating. That means He's definitely exercising. If you do something and then it causes you to get warm and start to sweat, um it's definitely then exercise. Um and again, that was another recommendation I got from my doctor. You need to walk until you break a sweat and then keep walking for 20 to 30 minutes after that point. So, it takes me about five or 10 minutes to get to the point where I feel like I'm actually exercising. Hey, I need a sip of water and it's time for members only chat. I also just need to check uh where I'm at. Oh, I'm clicking too many buttons here. Oh, yeah, it's that's perfect. Okay, let me close this. Hopefully, I'm not messing anything up. Um where are we at? Yes, let me get members only chat turned on and I will answer questions from the forum as well. There we go. If you're wondering what's happening right now, I'll answer questions again for about 10 minutes. If you're a member, you can ask questions directly in the chat and I will answer them but I will also answer the questions that are in the form. Let's see here. Freddie who needs a break. Hi, Bob. Workout or exercise? Are they interchangeable? If not, in which way have they are they to be used? Prendre des gorgées d'eau pendant la fin. Ah, that tasted good. Um yeah, I think they're somewhat interchangeable. Like I'm going to exercise, I'm going to work out. Yes, I would say they're interchangeable. Exercise is maybe a little more general because if I said I need to exercise more, I might start to run. That makes sense. If I said I need to work out more, I'm going to start to run. Running, yeah. So, exercise is definitely a broader term. Like playing basketball once a week, going for a run, lifting weights, that would all be exercise. But when I say work out, I'm going to work out or I need 
that was a, a hard workout. I always think about lifting weights um maybe a fitness class. That's that's so it's a subcategory of exercise I think. Uh let me do one more from the forum and then I'll get to the chat. Lolly Lolly says, bonjour Bob. Is ice hockey the most popular sport in Canada and have you practiced the sport? Merci Bob. So, I don't have the exact numbers but what I will say is this. Soccer or what many of you call football is very popular for young children in Canada. Hockey is still popular but what I've noticed is that soccer is much cheaper. So, a lot of kids play soccer. Hockey is very very expensive. You need to buy skates. You need to buy equipment. Um in order to have ice in an arena, it costs a lot of money. So, you have to pay to use the ice. Um whereas soccer is just you need a pair of soccer shoes and maybe shin pads and a ball and you can play anywhere. So, I think hockey is still quite popular but I do know that um a lot of kids play soccer now. That's uh, very popular as well. Um Yaroslav says, what about thumbs up? Nice if people give me a thumbs up. And then also says, weird question. What is the difference in pronunciation of exercise and exorcise? Please don't go deep into it. Can be just spelling. So, exorcise, I'm I'm over pronouncing it because it is a different word. Um it has to do when someone, I don't know, I'm not gonna go into it. Uh if you watch horror movies sometimes, they need to do an exorcism. There that's probably a better sound for it, an exorcism. Um I'm not gonna go into the details. It's a, it's a little bit of a strange topic but uh yes, it's exercise and then exorcise. I'm I'm still over pronouncing it though. Um they probably sound really similar if someone says them quickly. Wanda says, hi teacher Bob. Have you already tried to do yoga? What do you think about it? Thanks. What I'll say about yoga is this. I've yes done it once or twice like not a lot. I think for someone my age, it should probably be a regular part of my exercise routine um because I think it's just really good for your joints. That's where your like this elbow is a joint and then I think it's good for your muscles just to stretch and relax and to move in different ways and it's supposed to be really good for balance. So, people who do yoga, especially older people, um Balance is like your ability to stand straight up and and not fall over. So, I think that would be for someone my age. I I, sometimes I say I'm old. I'm not that old. I'm I'm in my early 50s. I should probably start making it part of my routine now so that when I am much older, I have good balance and ability to use my body well. Ricardo, are we going to see the farm today? How's the weather like? I do not have that camera hooked up. Sorry. Uh it's beautiful. We have had summer like weather all week. It has been over 20 degrees Celsius. It's a little strange actually. Uh Mode says, hi mister Bob. How was your week? When you work out at home, do you like to do it inside your house or on the farm? If the weather is conducive, of course. I I like to be outside. I did once a year or two ago set up like little stations on the farm. So, I would walk and then I would lift some cement blocks and then I would walk and I would climb up and down a ladder and then I would walk and I just did different things. Oh, and I ran up and down a set of stairs. We have stairs on the front of the barn. So, I should do that again because that was a lot of fun. Um oh, and I would climb up and down around on the wagon. I had a whole bunch of little things I would do. So, that was my preference. I should do that again. Lolly Lolly says, merci Bob. Exercising is not my cup of tea. I am lazy. That is the hard thing about exercise. This is not me. I heard this somewhere but I like to say exercise is the most fun when you're done. (laughs) So, I really like walking but I also like it when I'm done walking. It's a very nice feeling to be done uh for sure. Uh Key Park says, hi Bob. Do you like rope skipping? I think it's a kind of good exercise. I when I was a kid, I liked it. Now, it hurts my knees but I should probably try it again. There's ways to skip rope where it's less jarring. By the way, jarring is when like something's not smooth, right? Like when you run and your feet hit the ground, it's very jarring. Like you can feel it in the rest of your body. Um Yaroslav says, I was just curious. Both sound the same to me. That was the point. 
Yeah, and I think if you say them fast, exercising, exercising, like I did say them different there but you can probably hardly tell. Zeev, what are your hobbies? Lolly, lolly. She'll have to answer that. Mode says, have a sip, young Bob. Thank you very much. Yaroslav, do you have any favorite athlete, teacher Bob? Not really. Um, by the way, the Raptors lost. The Toronto Raptors are a basketball team in the NBA, the National Basketball Association. Did I get that right? Uh, they lost. Their season is over. So, no more basketball till next fall. Um, let's see here. Cecilia, hello, Bob. Thanks so much for this amazing lesson. I love doing exercise because I feel good and active. Yes, and it it kind of it's it's a a cumulative effect. That means that the more you exercise and the longer you exercise, the better you feel. It kind of builds on each other. So, it's a cumulative effect with exercise. Vitor, I like to exercise because I feel better. It's good when we have a stressful day. Yes, that's a good point. It's not just about having stronger muscles and better healthier heart. Exercise also makes you feel less stressed. So, if you're having like me a really busy week and I didn't have time to exercise, that's bad because the exercise will actually make me feel better and happier. It reduces stress. Good point, Vitor. Ricardo says, thanks, Mr. Bob. No problem. Lolly says, Zeev, my hobby is learning languages. There you go. English and Italian. Very cool. Freddie Wolf, Bob, have you ever considered purchasing or renting e-bikes for touring in order to be less exhausted at the end? Ou considères-tu que c'est tricher un peu que tu fais du vélo électrique? Merci. I think it is cheating a bit. I, my friend has an electric bike. And I'm not sure it's exercise. He um it is nice because he can bike further and see more but I'm not sure his heart rate is actually getting high enough for it to be considered exercise. Cecilia says, I totally agree. Let me get back to the questions here. Unsel says, hi, dear teacher Bob. How are you doing? Good. Have you ever done bodybuilding exercises? Love from Istanbul. Bye. So, I've I've lifted weights but not with the intention of you know being this like a huge bodybuilder who goes in a competition but I've certainly in university did regularly lift weights and enjoy it um and part of my goal was to look better but it wasn't because I wanted to be in some big competition or anything like that. Okay, here let me get one more question here from Peter. Hello, Mr. Bob. How are you? I'm glad to be watching a new video to learn how to speak English. My question, what's the difference? What's the difference between bike and spinning? Thanks. So, there's something called spin classes. Spinning is when a whole bunch of people sit on exercise bikes in a room and the person at the front leads them and they're on an exercise bike. So, it's called a spinning class. I've never done a spinning class um but they look interesting. Mode says, no further questions. Just keep taking care of yourself and exercise whenever possible. Yes, and on that note, I'm going to turn off the members only chat. Give me a moment here and we will get back to the lesson and finish it up. Thank you to all of you who are members. Thanks for your questions. It's nice to pause and to uh, answer a few specific questions as we move along. I think I can answer one more question from the form and then we will get back. Uh, let's see here. So, Natalia, hi, Bob. I have one word for you today, around. You used it in the announcement, sit around. There is also lounge around. Why around? Well, I don't know but the opposite of exercise is to sit around. People sit around too much in North America and maybe in your country. I don't know why. Um lounge around, sit around but it's exactly how we would say it. You don't want to sit around all day. You need to get out you need to exercise a little bit. So, it's just a unique way of saying it in English but we do say it. Like when I have a day off, sometimes I sit around too much. I I don't actually go outside and do some work. I sit around. So, that's good question by the way. It's kind of the opposite of exercise to sit around. Uh Fabian, hi teacher Bob. Thank you for this amazing lesson. I have a question for you. What type of exercise do you do in Canadian winters? I walk. I walk outside in the winter 
if it's below minus 10, I might go to the gym and walk on the treadmill but you can walk. You can go outside in the winter and walk. It's actually good if the snow is a bit deep because it's harder and then it's easier to get my heart rate up. So, yes. Um but another thing about Canadians, gym memberships go up in January. A lot of people join the gym in January. They might make a New Year's resolution to get in better shape uh, or they might simply feel like, ah, it's winter. Uh, I'd love to go on vacation but I'll just get a gym membership instead. Okay, let's finish off the lesson everyone. Uh that's is that where I'm supposed to be? Yes, that's where I'm supposed to be. Okay. Let me see if I can get this right. I should hit this button for a sec. Where are we at? 813. No problem. Personal trainer. A personal trainer is someone who you pay to help you work out. They will design a workout plan for you. They will design a strategy. They will set goals for you. They will show you how to do different exercises at the gym. This guy has probably hired this woman to be his personal trainer. That means he doesn't have to think about what he's going to do at the gym. When he goes to the gym, his personal trainer will say, okay, we're gonna start with this machine which I think is a squat machine. We're gonna start with this machine. You're going to do uh do it 12 times and then take a 30 second break and then do it some more. By the way, there's things called reps and sets with working out. I'm not gonna give you all the details. I'm not a personal trainer. But if you have lots of money, you can hire a personal trainer. Many celebrities, especially actors and actresses will hire a personal trainer so that when they start working on the movie, they look great and are in great shape. So, anyways, personal trainer is someone who is an expert at working out and helps you uh, work out properly. So, in the chat, Yaroslav says personal trainer versus instructor. So, a personal trainer helps you work out. An instructor would be someone who leads a fitness class. That would be the difference. So, if you remember the slide where the person is like there's other people doing the same motions, that would be an instructor. So, and then a personal trainer is literally someone who like tells you what to do. Active wear. So, we might call this fitness gear. We might call it workout gear. Um I call it active wear. Active wear refers to clothing that is designed for people who are exercising. So, when I go for a walk, I wear um I don't wear jeans. I don't wear my dress pants. Um I have special pants that they're a little bit waterproof. So, if it does rain, um they're warmer than normal pants. So, I have some active wear. I also have I don't actually have it here. I also have a jacket that I wear that's very thin. So, as I get warmer, um if it's raining or bad weather, it lets me sweat a little bit. It lets me uh, enjoy the outdoors um and it, it actually looks a lot like this one, just a different color. So, active wear would be any type of clothing, shoes, pants, shorts, uh shirts, t-shirts, jackets, any kind of clothing that you would wear when you work out. Um usually it's, it's a bit stretchier as well than normal clothing. Um it breathes better. That means it lets air in and out better than normal clothing. Uh and we would call it active wear. Some people will watch a workout video. This became very very popular during the pandemic. In Canada and in probably every other country, gyms were closed. You couldn't go to the gym. You couldn't go and play basketball. You couldn't go and lift weights. You couldn't go to the gym and go uh, to a fitness class. Um and so, workout videos became very very popular. In fact, on YouTube, two types of channels grew during the pandemic cooking channels and workout channels or exercise channels. So, you'll see here this guy is watching a workout video. It looks like some type of yoga and he is watching the video in order to learn how to do it. This is the cheap way to get instruction 
for working out. So, if you can't afford a personal trainer, many people will watch a workout video. And then, of course, there are things called fitness trackers. So, my fitness tracker says that I have taken 248 steps today so far. It also says that my pulse my pulse is 82. That's not too bad considering I'm talking. When I sit and do nothing for a while, my pulse goes down to about 65. Um when I'm at work, it's usually around 75 or 80 if I'm walking around. Uh and again, when I go for my walk, my pulse goes up to about 125 or 130. Um if I walk briskly up a hill, then my pulse will go to 135 or somewhere around there. But a fitness tracker will track the number of steps. It will track your heart rate. Some of them do other things as well. Mine has GPS built in. So, it will if I go for a walk when I get back on my computer, I can see a map of where I walk. But very fun. Um by the way, I don't think anyone this is more of a futuristic. No one has a fitness tracker with a 3D hologram that pops up but that would be cool someday, wouldn't it? And then, a lot of people will have a mat. We call this um a workout mat. Most people just call it a yoga mat even if they're not using it for yoga but a lot of people will have a mat that they use when they work out. In our back room of our house, um we have a mat. So, if we work out at home, it's just a little softer and it's has a little cushion under your feet. So, when you're lifting weights or jumping up and down, it's it's just a softer thing to have under your feet. Well, hey, I know that might have seemed a little bit short but that is the lesson, the English lesson about exercise. I am going to finish off the questions and then we will wrap this up. So, let me see if there are any more questions. Looks like a few. Alexa says, are there many gyms in Canada? They're pretty common. Um some went bankrupt during the pandemic. When you go bankrupt, it means your business isn't making enough money and so you cannot stay in business. Um but uh yes, most small towns have a gym. Large cities will have many different options. There are now some grocery stores I noticed that have a gym in the top floor. So, people can come to the gym and work out and then buy their groceries. I thought that was that's interesting. Um and many of our gyms are now 24 hour gyms. So, you can go any time of day or night and then you're you're we would call this a key fob. What I have on my keys here, this is a key fob. When I beep this, it lets me into the gym. Uh let's see here. Ormond says, hello, Mr. Bob. Have you ever been in that situation where you exercise one day like crazy and then the next day your whole body feels sore? Yes, I've been in that situation many times. It's not enjoyable but yes, it's part of working out is that you will get sore. Uh hopefully, it's just minor and you feel much better a day or two later for sure Uh, but yes, I have definitely been in that situation. So, let's go here. So, anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Uh 821, I'm gonna head out now uh to work. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good day. Do remember that this lesson will come out in a shorter version in a couple days so you can quickly review it to help remember the words that you've learned. Um I did read somewhere that when you learn a new English word, you need to use it like 10 or 20 times, something like that. So, please make sure that you do that. Um and uh make sure that you use some of these phrases somewhere in the next week. That will help you remember it as well. Anyways, thanks Dave for moderating the chat. Thanks to all of you who are here and hanging out. Uh bye to Gaurav and Suresh, Vitor, Isa, Lolly Lolly, Cecilia, bye to Wanda, um Irina, Rad80, Freddie Wolf, Key Park. Freddie Wolf says, Bob, thanks so much for this workout lesson. I haven't exercised that much since ages, four ages by the way. Now, I feel good and in a good shape. Stay healthy and have a great weekend. Yes, you too. Marwanto says, thanks. Lolly says, thanks, Bob. Cecilia says, thank you so much. No problem. Teo uh, says, thank you as well. So, bye to everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great Friday. Um I'm going to uh I'm gonna go shoot a short English lesson for my other channel right now and have it up in a couple of hours. Um I do have to go to work but it's a different sort of day. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, look for that. If you're like, where's the Friday lesson on the Bob's short English lesson channel? It's coming. I just have a couple things to do and I will get it up there for you. Anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.